This is Danai and today I will be sharing with you how I practice fast passages when I have fast notes in both hands that are not going in a parallel motion. So I'm not talking about scales going up and down, I'm not talking about arpeggios or any pre-practiced pattern, but fast passages where both hands are playing the fast notes and are playing completely independent things from each other. So if you're interested in seeing how I practice that and what I look out for, then keep on watching. So as an example, I chose a passage from a Mozart piano concerto. I'm going to show you the score right now. So if you maybe want to screenshot it, if you don't have the score at home, then do that so you can better understand the exercises as I show them to you. Generally, what is important when you have such fast passages in both hands with patterns that are very different from one another is that you really practice each pattern separately, that each hand knows exactly what it has to do before you add in the other one. So make sure that each hand is practiced separately a lot and you feel very confident with each hand playing alone. Very often, we're kind of used to the feeling of adding them both together. Even if we have some unclear things and some mistakes within the passage, somehow it feels more comfortable to play them together. And when we then practice them separately, we are surprised at how uncomfortable that feels. And I would definitely recommend that you focus on that uncomfortable feeling and practice the hands separately and really master and perfect them separately in order for the passage to sound convincing when you then put both hands together. So as always, when I practice a technically challenging passage, first I'm going to play through the entire passage slowly. I do one of my main exercises that I do in almost any technically challenging piece, which is that I take four notes and play them slowly and then play the next four notes fast and alternate like that through the entire passage. That way I don't have to play through the entire passage in a fast way and it's much easier for me, but at the same time I am playing through it from beginning to end without stopping. When I'm done with that, I turn it around and play four fast notes in the beginning and four slow notes following. I first practice on my right hand. 
So what I do is I practice sections of one bar because the pattern always changes after one bar. So I practice one bar at a time. isolate the very uncomfortable transitions so there is one transition in particular that I find not so comfortable so I isolate it and practice the two notes around the transition so in this case the thumb and the second finger then I add one note before and one note after and after that I add one more note before and one more note after until I have the entire pattern <laughs> practice on my left hand. Now in this specific pattern, the fifth finger of the left hand has a very important role. Usually, or at least for me, the fifth finger is a rather weak finger of the hand. So I really want to make sure that I practice it very consciously and with big intention in order to make sure that it's going to be very strong when I play through the entire passage and very controlled. So what I do is I practice the fifth finger, the bass only. This is in a way also the melody, I would say, that carries us through the passage. The bass has the melody. So I practice that fifth finger only, and I really try to also make sure to feel the melodic line. So I might practice it with a tiny crescendo going up, tiny diminuendo going back down, with a real musical phrase behind it. I practice sections of four notes, which basically means the fifth finger and then the three notes that follow until the next fifth finger. And here I make sure to really keep that feeling of extra weight on the fifth finger. I try to imagine that the fifth finger is a bit heavier than my other fingers. I also find that it has to be a bit louder and it is more important. So I put a little bit more weight on that finger and try to play the other notes really silently and with not as much importance. the left hand in clusters so basically I take those sections of four that I just practiced and put them all together so this means an octave plus the second finger playing this extra note and I play those clusters throughout the entire passage this is to ensure that my fingers know exactly which position they have to be in part of this passage, I first practice the outer voices, the melody. This is a very similar exercise to me practicing only the fifth finger in the left hand. Only here also the right hand has the melody, so I practice in the right and left hand at the same time the outer notes that are then in the end also going to lead me through the piece. <laughs> that melody both musically and I know how the phrasing goes, I know which dynamics I want to do in those notes and also technically I've noticed what it feels like to put more weight on those fingers. I practice that second part of the passage 
bar by bar. So I just play through one bar and really make sure when I do that, that the melody comes out that I practiced separately before. <laughs> I first play through this entire second part of the passage. And finally, I play through the entire passage. video and that you found it helpful let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this and i will see you again in the next video next week bye